This is TVC News at 10. We'll begin in the nation's capital, where lawmakers in the Green Chamber of the National Assembly have again voiced their displeasure following continued attacks, killings by bandits and terrorist groups in the country. The lawmakers are now renewing their call on President Muhammadu Buhari to declare a state of emergency on the nation's security situation. They insist Nigeria is under siege and should seek services of mercenaries to supplement the efforts of security agencies in containing the situation. This call is coming days after dozens of people were gruesomely murdered in Plateau and Bene State by suspected bandits and killer herders. National Assembly correspondent Chokia Adisa reports. Almighty God, creator and ruler and ruler of heaven and earth. Motions on insecurity from virtually every part of the country have become regular on legislative days here. On this day, two motions detailed the indiscriminate killings, rape, kidnapping, and destruction of property in Plateau and Bimini states. Nigerians are being killed on daily basis, Mr. Speaker. The four angles of Nigeria, nowhere is safe. Mr. Speaker, what is beating my imagination more, aside of the killing, is who is responsible, not in times of the people that are committing those atrocities. Nigerian governments have come out in different occasions to say they know them. This matter has created fears among our constituents and it poses grave danger in many ways, which could include negative reactions from our constituents. It is a display of emotion, anger and frustration as members contribute to the two motions. They accuse some of the security agents of aiding and abating bandits and renew calls for the sack of the national security advisor and the minister of defense. It is so sad that um, we have come to a situation in this country where evil is perpetrated and no one is held accountable. What cases were we, we understand that information were passed to the security uh, personnel, and still these terrorists overcome the ordinary Nigerian people. This is a failed state. The executive headed by Mr. President must know that Benue, our lives matter. We come here and we cry, and today again, Benue is bleeding. I don't know what argument anybody can give to insulate the security agencies, in terms of doing their duty to ensure that this thing does not happen. The House seeks relief materials for displaced persons and urges the presence of Joint Security Task Force in affected areas. As part of solutions to the increasing wave of insecurity in the country, the legislators urged President Muhammad Buhari to immediately invoke Section 83, Subsection 1 of the Constitution for the release of contingency fund to enable the country that the services of mercenaries TVC News, Abuja. In the meantime, the federal government says preliminary report has shown that the recent attack on the Kaduna Abuja train is collaboration between dislodged Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast and bandits operating in the forests of the northwest. Minister of Information Lai Mohammed revealed this at the end of the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by President Muhammad Buhari. State House correspondent Femi Akonde reports. Lai Mohammed says plans and efforts of the military in fighting terrorism will not be a subject matter of a press conference. But it is not surprising that memos presented by the Ministry of Defense got the approval of the Federal Executive Council. Contracts have been awarded for the purchase of brand new vehicles to transport cargoes and troops to operational areas. The federal government suspects the recent attack on an Abuja-bound train on the Kaduna-Abuja rail line is a collaboration between bandits and Boko Haram terrorists, but insists the efforts of service chiefs will soon unravel those involved in the attack. Honestly, I think the, the security chiefs are working hard to unveil those who are involved, and they will tell you very soon the people that are carrying out these activities. What is really going on and our efforts to ensure that all these activities are stopped once and for all. We are really on top of the situation. We are planning hard and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Preliminary reports of what transpired 
at uh, the at, you know, at the Kaduna train you know, attack shows that there's been a kind of uh, uh, you know collaboration between the bandits and the and and the, dis, and the dislodged Boko Haram uh, you know fighters from the northeast. But overall, I can tell you very confidently that the very government is on top of this matter. The power sector is still reeling from the effect of the national grid collapse. The Minister of Power also agrees that the frequent attack on power infrastructure in the country is a deliberate economic sabotage that will not be allowed to fester. So we need to also work together as a nation to support the leadership, to support the government, to face this, these challenges together. The Federal Executive Council also approved a memo for the reconstruction of Pategi Water Project in Kwara State, and the Ministry of Science and Technology also got approval for two memos presented at the Federal Executive Council. Now there are fresh expectations that the approval gotten by the Ministry of Defense will enhance the operations of the country's military and improve the offensive against terrorists and bandits. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Let's turn attention to Bayelsa, where the Nigerian military has reiterated the need for continuous collaboration with host communities in the fight against crude oil theft, kidnapping and sundry crimes in the Niger Delta region. This was made known after the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Rabo, visited King Edmond Dakoru of Nembe Kingdom. Joseph Kunde has details. Available data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, revealed that Nigeria's oil production crashed by 744,000 barrels in March. These losses are gotten majorly from pipeline vandalism, crude oil theft, and other sundry crimes along the waterways, especially in the Niger Delta region. These challenges formed the overriding theme when the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabo, visited the King of Nimbi Kingdom, King Edmond Daokoru, who was once a Secretary General of OPEC. They're owing us lots of money in terms of uh, legacy payments outstanding right from when they took over from Shell. Jobs that are supposed to be done by uh, my citizens as part of uh, local content are being done by the company itself under various fronts. So we're almost at the tipping point. There's just so much I can do to persuade my people to let them be. So this is an SOS to you, uh, CDS. Uh, please take it up uh, for us. As a family, we'll come together and bring it to you so that we can find an amicable way to solve this problem. We're in public, so we're here for security issues. But I can assure you that this message will get to the JMD of NMPC. My coming to see His Eminence is to appreciate him for all the support that he has given to members of the armed forces and the security agencies for indeed the various successes that uh, they have recorded, and then also craving for more of his support in this regard, along with um, every citizen of Nebe Kingdom. General Loki Rabo also paid a visit to the Joint Tax Force Operation Delta Safe, where he commissioned 30 operational vehicles. Uh, before now, of course, there were tools that they have. Many of them have become a little bit old, so what we've done now is to increase or reinvigorate the tools available to Operation Data Safe. There will be a serious enhancement within the um, transportation system, not just transportation, but anything that has to do with um, uh, peace and security of the country. Joseph Kunde, TVC News, Ibogene. The Nigerian army is warning imposters to desist from wearing its uniform or risk arrest and prosecution. The general officer commanding 81 Division, Nigerian Army, Major General Omar Musa, gave the warning in Lagos. Senior correspondent Ivy Kano reports. Most times, the public has come in contact with individuals believed to be seen wearing army uniforms and displaying questionable behaviors. We are not arrested in a day at different places on different occasions. 
the army says such people are not their main. The 81 Division has distanced themselves from such as they paraded these 12 imposters arrested in both Ogu and Lagos State. According to the GOC, over 100 imposters have been arrested by his main. We have arrested about 150. The ones you see, the 12 now, are the ones we have finished investigating. Because before we fought to Nigerian police, we tried to investigate them to get the sources of the uniforms and who made the ID card for them so that we'll be able to nip the, uh, the issue at the board. Because if you get the sellers or the provider of the uniform, sometimes it goes a long way in preventing people to wear them. He solicited for information that will help the division's Operation Checkmate in helping reach the zone of those he described as unscrupulous elements. Operation Checkmate is a Nigerian Army surveillance activity on the conduct of our troops outside the barracks. So in the course of monitoring the activity of our soldiers outside, we come across this uh, suspect, the, imp uh, the, the impersonators. So the Operation Checkmate is not only for arresting imposters. It's also, if you notice, also in Lagos and Ogun State, we have been arresting, including civilians, who were not only wearing uniform, but anybody who displays military banner and accoutrement, such as jungle hat, uh, pickup, belt, koboko, and the rest. He described as sad the refusal of criminals to change. Anybody who is seen with painted army color vehicle will arrest it and impound it. The law is there and uh, specify the use of this olive green color for vehicle to be used by only military. Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos. The remains of 29 victims of boat mishap at Gida Megana in Dandemai of Shigari local government area of Sakoto State has been buried, according to Islamic Rite. The victims were part of the 35 passengers that boarded the boat to cross over a dam in search of firewood for commercial purposes. The incident occurred Wednesday morning when the boat convened the second batch of the team capsized and when 29 persons comprising 23 women and six boys died in the process. Six of the passengers survived the unfortunate incident after a search and rescue operation by local divers supported by authorities in the local government. In the meantime, the state governor, Aminu Tambawal, has visited the community, condoling the people over the sad development. He urged the people to accept the incident as the will of Allah and prayed for the repose of the soul of the deceased. Members of the community are now calling on the state government to provide them with better boats, as well as enact laws and regulations to ensure safety measures are adhered to, henceforth to forestall future happenings. To judicial matters now. The Supreme Court has affirmed the six years imprisonment imposed on a former federal director of pensions, John Yakobo, and ordered him to refund the sum of 22.9 billion naira to the federal government. The money was part of the police pension fund Mr. Yakobo admitted before High Court of the Federal Capital Territory to have misappropriated. Justice Tijani Abubakar, in its ruling in an appeal filed by Mr. Yakobo, upheld the decision of the Court of Appeal, which in 2018 sent him to six years imprisonment in addition to the refund of the sum. The Apex Court held that Mr. Yakubu and others engaging in fraudulent practices must be told through court judgment that it is no longer business as usual. Justice Abubakar also held that the appeal of the former federal pension director seeking to set aside a six years jail term against him was frivolous and devoid of merit. Let's talk politics. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says the date for all activities in the timetable schedule for the 2023 general elections, including the conduct of party primaries, remains firm and fixed. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu affirmed this at a media briefing in Abuja on the activities of the Electoral Commission. Habid Alawal reports. Already 10 political parties have served notices to the commission for the conduct of their primaries. 
With 51 days to the deadline for the conduct of primaries, political parties have been asked to adhere strictly to all dates in the timetable. This includes nomination of their candidate via the INEC portal. With this, political parties have a stipulated time to tidy up their primaries and present a candidate. Large nominated candidates must emerge from valid primaries as provided in Section 84 of the Electoral Act 2022. This is necessary to avoid unhappy consequences of any breach of the Commission's timetable or the Electoral Act. The Commission also expresses worry over invalid registration and promises to continue cleaning up the register to eliminate invalid registration and ensure that only those who should be in the register of voters are included. Nearly 45 percent of the completed registrations nationwide are invalid, rising to as high as 60 percent or more in some states. This infraction happened in all states of the Federation. No state is immune from it. These invalid registrations will not be included in the register of voters. It appeals to Nigerians who registered between June and December 2021 to collect their permanent voter cards in person. 1.8 million new permanent voters' cards were unveiled, which will be ready for collection in all parts of the country. As of January this year, valid registration stands at 1,390,519, while invalid stands at 1,126,359. Habid Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. Staying in the nation's capital, the upper legislative chamber has held a valedictory session at Wednesday's plenary to honor its members who have now assumed new roles at the All Progressives Congress Secretariat. Senators Adamu and Kiari resigned their positions as representatives of Nasarawa West and Borno North following their election as APC National Chairman and Deputy Chairman, respectively, while Senator Hassan Mohammed, representing Zamfara Central, also resigned to become his state deputy governor. Tijisu Adewi has more. For three members of the Senate, it is time to say goodbye. They move on to new assignments. This kind of sessions, the legislative sessions, are there to honor some of our colleagues who have attained certain positions in life and also in the affairs of the nation. Lawmakers took turns to eulogize their colleagues and urge them to replicate their achievements in their new offices. Indeed, Senator Adamu Abla is a political textbook of contemporary Nigeria. He's a man who has gathered a tremendous wealth of experience as far as politics is concerned. And if you take a look at his contributions here, you will see that he's a man who's highly patriotic. In a terrain where the political class suffers from chronic memory amnesia, why people hardly look beyond their north, nor think beyond the depths of their pockets, is a steady inconsistency and loyalty. But what this goes to show is that the legislature is coming of age, that the legislature is now contributing to the political development and stability of our country. And we shouldn't take this for granted. The new APC chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, is pleased by the goodwill messages from his colleagues. He also hopes that the newly elected lawmakers that will replace them will protect the integrity of the National Assembly. I will cherish your kind words. I will cherish the advice that came forth from your contributions. And I want to assure you that I will remain a product of this chamber. Until his election as a chairman of the APC, Senator Adamu was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Agriculture, while Senator Kiari was chairman of the Senate Committee on FCT, and Senator Mohammed was the chairman of the Senate Committee on Ecology. It is the end of the journey and the beginning of a new one for these lawmakers here at the National Assembly. They bid their colleagues farewell and still ask for their support to help succeed in their new assignment. From the National Assembly, Tijesu Adeoye, TVC News, Abuja. Here in Lagos, 
National leader of the All Progressives Congress, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinobu, says Nigeria needs a leader that will address the myriad of challenges facing the country. He stated this at a meeting held with APC serving and former speakers and the deputies in the State House of Assembly. Abim Bola Agwebi has the story. It was a gathering of legislators, past and present speakers, and deputy speakers from across the 36 states in the country. Converged on Lagos to meet minds with the former governor of the state, Ashwadi Balak Tinubu. This is coming days after he met with APC governors in Abuja. With Lagos being the host, Governor Babajide Sonwolu and the Speaker of the Assembly welcomed the former governor to the Pali, which was themed the legislature, changing times in Nigeria's democratic journey. Ashiwaju, our leader. Ashiwaju father declared his intention to join the presidential race, describes himself as the most qualified for the top position. As a name here, Nigeria needs me. The best of tyranny, I am. So right. struggle for democracy. The twist and turn of it happened here. The Bush path, living without family, living in exile, financing other pro-democracy groups. From the sweat of my investment, I've contributed immensely. May that any other person running today. Ashiwaju Balatinibu highlight when he was the first governor to grant autonomy to the State House of Assembly in the country. Without much ado, the APC lawmakers threw their ways behind the former governor, pledging their support. All judges invited all um, um, people in that space, legislators, current, former, you know, past to seek, you know, their, their cooperation and, and because he feels that they are an important stakeholder, right, in his drive to actualize, you know, its dream. We strongly believe in his idea, we strongly believe in his vision, we strongly believe in his commitment and that is why we are here today. He has a great uh, um, plan for Nigeria if he is able to get the chance. The lawmakers are confident that the collaborative efforts between the legislature and the executive arm will bring about the desired results. Abimbola Agbibi, TVC News, Lagos. Away from politics, as Nigeria works to revolutionize its renewable energy sector, the need for skilled development in the sector to meet the demand for employment has become more imminent. This is the reason behind Energize, a career fair for the clean energy sector organized by the Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Associations Alliance, the EU and German government in collaboration with GIZ and the Ministry of Power. Moyo Thomas reports. The renewable energy sector is rapidly growing in Nigeria. This growth is creating opportunities for employment and a demand for skills in the sector. A project tagged Energize aims to establish an employability platform where professionals and renewable energy and energy efficiency actors can easily collaborate as it works to bridge the skills gap in the sector. The Minister of Power says there is already a gap of over 20,000 professionals in the sector. The Ministry is therefore glad to be part of this laudable initiative which is the first of its kind and serves as a pathway to increase employability of professionals and in boosting employment for the youth in the energy stroke power sector and economic growth in the long run. The renewable energy sector is a growing one which requires a skilled workforce, more specifically, over 250 renewable energy and energy efficiency companies are currently operating in Nigeria, and also we have about 100 operational solar mini grids developed and operated by over 20 top developers, which is currently at the brink of expansion. The European Union announced plans to contribute about 60 million euros to the sector before 2024. As it says, it has provided over 200 million euros grant already to the renewable energy sector. 
Nigeria needs new opportunities for job creation, considering that employment is already an alarming concern in the country. The renewable energy sector provides a solution to this, while also forging Nigeria towards attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals 7, 8 and 13. With the promises of renewable energy helping the country to meet the over 80 million unserved population, building skill set alongside this is also very important. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja.